Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and this week we're checking out and testing the Sculfin S10 and all of its accessories. Let's roll the intro and get to work. Skolfin recently reached out and asked me if I wanted to test out their latest laser, which is the S10. And I'm a big fan of the Skolfin brand, so I said absolutely yes, and they were kind enough to send out the laser along with all of its accessories. So everything you see in front of me today has been provided by Skolfin, but they don't have any say over the review of the laser or the edit of this video. For those of you that have been following the channel for a while now will know that I started my laser journey on the Skolfin S9. And although I loved that machine, I made a switch to the Otour Laser Master 2 Pro purely because that machine had a rotary module that Skolfin didn't have at the time. Skolfin has since released a rotary module, so I'm really excited to switch back to Skolfin and test out this accessory. If you ask me, the number one thing that I like about Skolfin is its ease of use and ease of putting together. The machine takes about 20 minutes to put together from start to finish and is really easy to use. Now while I put it together, let me run you through some of the specs. The S10 has a similar work area to the S9, being 410mm by 400mm. It has an upgraded 10 watt laser module along with an upgraded motherboard. But the best part of the S10 is it comes purpose built and designed to have air assist. The tubing is already in the box, you just need to add the air pump afterwards. And the advantages of having air assist along with the upgraded laser means that we should be able to increase our cutting speeds while cutting down on the charring on the material that we're cutting through. Now in terms of material, it's the same as the S9. It can cut through MDF, acrylic, plywood, some hardwoods, leather, and it can engrave on all of that and much more. Now with every machine, there are some downsides. The downsides of the S10, if you ask me, the first one is that there are no limit switches. The S10 comes with places for you to mount limit switches, but they have not included that in the box. It's a bit of a pity, I would have liked to have seen them throw them in the box given that there are mounting holes for limit switches, but it is something that I will probably have to add later on. The other thing that they don't have as an accessory is an enclosure that is purpose built for the Sculfin. I will build an enclosure for it at some point now that I know that I'm going to stay with the Sculfin brand, but it would be nice to see them come out with an enclosure that is purpose built for it. The S10 is all together and the air pump is hooked up so we are ready to run it through its paces and do some testing. I'm going to use the Sculfin honeycomb bed that they sent through to me. I think this is a fantastic accessory. When you're cutting through material, you want to have it suspended up off the ground. That will help with the charring on the underside of your material, but it will also protect the surface that your laser is sitting on. Now Sculfin have sent through a whole bunch of materials that we are gonna run some tests on today. So let's get testing. Let's stop and take a minute to check in, have a look at our testing so far, see what we've learnt so that we can use that as we continue the testing. But something that I did want to acknowledge that I just got finished saying how easy the Sculfin is to use. And in my experience, that has been the case. But with the S10, there are two things that I have really struggled with to get to this point. The first one being, I could not get light burn to detect the S10 automatically. In the end, I had to add it manually, which is not too hard to do, but it was a struggle to work out why it would not detect it. I don't know if it's because the S10 is brand new, light burn being a third party software, the two of them have just not caught up to each other. But if you do end up getting a Sculfin, I would strongly recommend joining the Sculfin Facebook group because the people in there are so lovely and helpful and any problem that I've had, they have been able to solve thus far. The second problem that I had was getting it to register the home position as its zero point. With the S9, all I had to do was have it turned off, put it into its home position in the lower left-hand corner, turn it on and it would register at zero. With this S10, and again, I don't know if this is all S10s or just mine, I had to have everything unplugged, put it into its zero position, then plug in the power, plug in the USB, and then turn it on. It was registering its zero point as soon as I plugged power into the motherboard. So just something to note that if you do go down the path of the Sculfin, you may run into these problems. Now that that's happened and done, 
Now it is really, really easy to use. With that being said, let's have a look at these test files. These test files come from the Make or Break YouTube channel. I will link Brandon below. He is a fantastic resource if you're looking at getting into lasering because Brandon has reviewed just about every laser on the market. And he also provides these test files free of charge. So thank you, Brandon, for providing them. Now I will show you close-ups of these if you wanna pause the video to have a closer look, by all means. The first thing I notice in the test results, which is something that I did know, but it's nice to see reflected, is that if I'm engraving, I don't want to have air assist on because it just pushes the charred timber around and starts to smudge the project. If I'm cutting through timber, I definitely want to have the air assist on, and this is really when the air assist comes into its own. But the most surprising result to me in these tests comes to when I'm cutting through material. Regardless of whether or not I had air assist on or off, the results are actually exactly the same. Granted, when I have air assist on, the cut is considerably cleaner, which means I'm gonna gain better efficiency with a better project because I'm not going to have to sand as much on the back end. But I did think I would get better results with the air assist in terms of what I could cut through and the speeds that I could get. This is only a very small sample size, but it is something really interesting to me. Now you can definitely tell the laser is more powerful. At 100% power at 300 millimeters per minute, I am cutting through in one pass, which is much better than any laser I've had in the past. And you don't really wanna be running a laser at 100%, so it's good to see that even at 50% power, I'm still getting really great results and not having to have the laser all that slow, which is really promising to see. Now the other thing that I've tested on so far is these slate tiles, and that's because I've never done slate tiles before, so I was interested to see what results I would get. Now all the files that I use today will reflect something about me or something that I love. I love country music, so this one is all about music. And then this one is all about tacos and Mexican food because if it was up to me, we'd be eating Mexican every night. But these coasters turned out so great and it just opens up a world of possibilities of things that I can make and create on the laser. Now, I absolutely love being a part of this maker community. So I wanna get all of you at home or at work, wherever you're watching this video involved. Do you wanna take a photo with me? Because I wanna take a photo on my iPhone, send it to Lifeburn and print it on some different materials and see what results I get. So. Don't be shy, come on, you can be in a photo with me. I'm gonna turn you around so that we can get that cool small fry logo in the background. And on the count of three, say cheese. Ready? One, two, three, cheese. All right, I'm gonna spin you around nice and slow so hopefully no one gets sick. Now I wanna hear from everyone. How many people sitting at home or at work just smiled at their screens? I hope you did because I'm having a ton of fun. I'm gonna send that photo over to the laptop and continue testing. All right, let's stop and take a look at this black acrylic because it has bubbled as it was engraving, which is not what I was expecting. You know what? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so silly. It has a piece of clear. I should know this. I work with acrylic often. I should know this. It has a plastic protective sheet that needs to be peeled off. That's why it's bubbled. That would have turned out great if I had taken that off. Is it on the other side? Yes. Really should have looked closer before I did this. What a special human I am. Okay, well, let me take off this clear sheeting because I should have done that to start with. And we'll have another go because it looks great, but it's not 100% because of the plastic sheeting. So let's have another go. Okay, let me turn this off. 
The first one I did, I did six passes on the cut at 70% and that ever so slightly did not cut all the way through. So I redid it and I turned it up to eight passes. I think it's always better to go a little over than what you think because then you can guarantee that when you pick it up, it is going to cut. So hopefully this worked. Yes, it worked. And now that I've removed the plastic, the engraving also looks fantastic. Yeah, that is really, really cool. On the black, oh, you could do some cool things. My mind is already running. Okay, let's put this with our other test pieces and keep testing. Okay, let's have a close look at this guy. I tried something different on this one. It is nine mil plywood and I did half the cut with air assist and half the cut without air assist because I wanted to see what the difference was. Because when I did my test pieces, I got the exact same cut results regardless of whether or not I had air assist on or off. And I did say it may change as I move through projects in the future. And this is the case here. It did cut out, which is really nice, but the cut is considerably cleaner with air assist, which is just proving why you really wanna have air assist if you can. I used the exact same settings to do the cut, 200 millimeters per minute. I needed nine passes with air assist and I needed 13 passes to get through without air assist. So gaining an efficiency and also getting a cleaner project, which is really nice to see. The photo turned out fantastic as well. It's the LA Clippers, they're my favorite basketball team. So yeah, really happy with this one and some really great learning in just a single piece. So let's keep going with our testing. I'm excited to see how this has worked out because this is leather. I've never worked with leather before. The engraving is fantastic. That is at 8,000 millimeters per minute and only 20% power I think I ran with. And I've done the same settings as plywood at three mil, but I've just dropped it down by a pass. So this is two passes instead of three. And it worked. This is so cool that I can make this out of leather. So I made this to purposely fit the box that I just made, which is also super cool if you ask me. This is why you make, because this is so cool. So in my box, no idea what I'm gonna do with the box, but I just wanted to do it as a concept to see whether or not I could even design something and would it even work? And now it says, be a nice human, because that's what we all should be. That is so cool. The last thing I'm going to test before I wrap up this video is the Sculfin Rotary. You'll notice that the laser is propped up, which it needs to be. They do include riser legs in the box, but I am using my own designed 3D printed risers. I like these ones, they're purpose built for the S10. It locks the legs in and they're really easy to adjust up and down depending on whatever you're lasering. If you're looking for a video to go in depth on how to set up the rotary, I will link a video above showing me getting up and running with the Otor rotary because it is the exact same process. So let's go ahead, get this set up and laser a bottle. So there you have it, the bottle is all complete and it looks fantastic. I'm so happy with how the bottle has turned out and I really like the Sculfin Rotary, especially if I compare it to the Otor. The Sculfin is that little bit longer so it doesn't have any problems with the larger bottles. This is the 750ml bottle and when I would do it on the Otor, I would have trouble balancing them from time to time and they would have a tendency to walk across the roller. I didn't have any of those issues with the Sculfin. It was a dream to use. 
Now I have tested every material that Skolfin has sent through to me, some on camera, some off camera, but the laser has had no problem with any of the material I've thrown at it. It's been a really fun machine to use. Once I got over those initial connection issues, I didn't have any issues moving through the testing. Now, I wanna say a big thank you to Skolfin for sending through everything to test. If you are looking at purchasing a Skolfin S10 or any of the accessories I've used today, there are purchase links down in the description below. Thank you for watching this video. If you have liked this video, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons or do me one better and go and watch one of these videos that are about to pop up on your screen and I'll see you next time.